Yeah, tell him. <laughs> so much angst. You know what is concerning to me, and I'm I'm kind of confused about. We never saw the actual death, right? Oh yes. There's no solution that drinking booze out of a horn cannot solve. Has Asklad changed at all? This, did this experience change him? Is he reflecting? Episode 5, The Troll's Child. How deep is your rage? He's got water? Is this water? Can we drink this? That's salt water. You can't drink that. That's no good. Does it get any lower from here if you're Thorfinn? I don't know. There's a really bizarre scenario that could form when I think about this situation. The only way he gets out of this is with Asklad's help or extreme luck. He's obviously plotting revenge. He's plotting to kill Asklad, but I don't know, stranger things have happened, especially when survival is concerned. He might end up being with them for a little, little while, which is a bizarre and intriguing thought, especially when you consider stock home syndrome. And also, especially in the context of this world where, you know, Asklad's a bad dude. These are all pretty bad dudes. They just killed a god among men in what was just the ultimate tragedy last episode. But at the same time, this is, their world and for Asklad, it's a business, so it's it's a sticky situation. But Thorfinn's not thinking about any of that right now. He's just thinking about bloodlust and sadness. Poor kid. England near the River Humber. Just keep your clothes on. This could be the luck, though. This could be the luck. Famous last words. Or just stop it off. Just stop him by, you know? England doesn't seem like the most hospitable place to stop for a rest. So at this point, he could probably just escape, right? He's on land. But yeah, he's, what does he have to look at except for revenge? This whole world has been destroyed. <laughs> I guess he was just exhausted. I feel like there are a few things as soul-crushing or as just infuriating as experiencing a great injustice and coming face to face with your own powerlessness. I feel like it also has a way of feeling like your fault. You know, if only I had done more, if only I had prepared better. I mean, of course, there's nothing he could have done. He's a little child. But I think from that could come some really interesting things, you know, vows to not be blind to certain things anymore, be more effective. Welcome to England. This is their short leisurely stop. I thought they were in danger. How wrong I was. What's this guy's quirk? Ears? Didn't even bother to cook it. Ooh, this is really crazy. This is the enemy, so-called enemy England being wiped out by Vikings. Oh no, he's got a, his little dagger. Now might be a good time if you're thinking about revenge. Ugh. It's a confident sleeping pose for a Viking leader. Is he gonna pick up the pick up the broadsword? Oh no. I feel like a dagger would work better for his size. I have no doubt he could do it. Wow, he walked out. He knew. So what now if you're Thorfinn? Oh my god, it's so humiliating. They even forgot about him. He wanted to do a face-to-face. -face. so weird. It's another situation for him where it's like... It actually ends up being endearing. I like his spunk. <laughs> Well, he got a lot of the honor. <laughs> yeah, even these vile Viking mercenaries are going to recognize the greatness. He's got something you can't really teach. He's teaching him with his foot. I would say no, but he did get knocked out by rolling gently down a hill, so... But we, the audience, haven't seen it. He was just sort of standing there with arrows in him. Maybe it was just too glorious to show on screen. He does feel a little bit... 
changed. Maybe I'm imagining it. I feel like you can't come across someone like Thor and watch that without having it impact you at some at some level, even if it's slow and gradual. This is so bizarre. This is so bizarre and such an awesome and bold choice. Joke's on you, I'm gonna eat these wet bones. You could eat those bones though, you could at least get the marrow. But isn't that worse than taking the meat, meaty bones? It's still their meat. Yikes. Pain. Huge credit to the show just from conception. Being clear on its stance on other people. There's a lot of evil going on, but there's an element of it that is kind of like, well, that's kind of just their life. I mean, just given the world we've seen so far, you take this group and compare them to any other group and you're probably not going to find that much discrepancy because it's largely a sign of the times. You know, Thor's himself, the, the glorious man god that he was, also came from this life. So it's not like he was perfect. He just had the, the wits and the understanding and the self-reflection ability to escape it. But that's a rare trait. Maybe that's easy to reject because we're never in these situations. But you can do a sort of a litmus test, you know, like the extent to which you reflect society's values is perhaps an indication of how you would reflect any society's values that you happen to be in. So this is really weird to say, and maybe this is going to be controversial. I don't know. I don't even really hate this group. I think what they're doing is terrible, but the hatred and desire for revenge and killing that, that Thorfinn is feeling is not even that disconnected or separated from them. The only person who's separate so far that we've seen actually come into conflict is Thor's, and he was able to hold to his ideals. You know, speaking of survival, this is Thorfinn's survival, it seems. This group. I don't know what'll happen in the story, but I feel like in this situation, he would end up joining them. And I feel like there's probably a lot of precedent for that in history. You know, I feel like children will be orphaned and then join whatever warring group that orphaned them and can even come to identify with it. Overall, the show doing a really great job creating this really complex situation, especially for Thorfinn, who's just consumed with anger and feelings of powerlessness and desire for revenge, total isolation, starvation, and somewhere in there, way deep down buried by all of this, is the memory of his father's words when he told him that there are no enemies and that killing someone is always wrong. That will have no sway but exists as a seed that might be borne out as he actually develops enough power to make any kind of choice one way or the other. There are so many conflicting forces for Thorfinn right now, it's it's really exciting to see where his character goes. But I think, you know, the, the blind hatred is not the final, it's not the final answer, it's not the final assessment. I expected nothing less. He died a hero. Interesting reaction. It's tough, but is that how she really feels? The more I watch this show, the more I just love Leaf. Like, he was introduced as this kind of goofy character. He's just the man. Even if you can't fight. It's true what he said about warriors not needing to fight in the battlefield. I just gotta be upset inside. They're right to be concerned. But she's staying focused on her on her life. These people are strong as hell. I've been so much more upset about so much less. <laughs> Don't forget the ooze, use, and the one jacked cow, but it's gonna catch up to her. It'll catch up to you. Can't run away forever. Oh, well, I think we know who the villain leader will be in Thor's absence. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Uh, the, that's the best soup. One leaf mint soup. She has to keep herself busy. Gotta keep the dread out. Gotta keep the existential dread out and pain out. Fight it. Fight it. Here it comes. There it is. There's no escape. Ah. I know that feeling too. I know the feeling of trying to run away from it. You can't. You can even fool yourself. You know, you can you can fool yourself into thinking that you've processed it or that, oh, actually, maybe I just won't feel any pain about this. You can think you've beaten it. If you can't look at it, if you can't process it, it's going to be there. And it might even come out in other ways. Even if you don't grieve, it's probably affecting your actions. It'll catch you, especially in moments of silence. Have you guys ever had the experience of suddenly and acutely mourning something that is sort of ancient that happened a really long time ago and realizing you've been carrying it all this time, sort of pretending that it wasn't a thing? And then maybe also realizing how much it's been affecting your 
your whole outlook and, and therefore behavior. Helga being a really great mom for her daughter there, especially considering the fact that she too is grieving. They both need each other. Thorfinn will get revenge, it just might not be in the way he thinks. Yo. <gasps> Speaking of his awakening, loss of innocence. This is the Mushroom Berserker. Right, right. The most interesting and intriguing thing choice the show could make is having him be decent right now. And it seems like that's the way it's going to be. Another thing that's so interesting, and Thorfinn will have no way of realizing this now, but it's this very spirit that's kind of saving him right now. What about that kid? Yeah, he's got something special. That's what it is. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm saying. New character? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was expecting him to just like cozy up to him. <laughs> you can tell how much time I've spent with wild wolves. Oh my! That was a short character arc. I'm not gonna lie, I was sort of hoping he would develop a wolf companion. <laughs> oh well, he had his first kill. Now he's practicing to kill Asklad using Asklad's advice. He just hit it by accident? Oh, okay. There's an insight there. We've all tried it. We've all tried it. This is a very odd training montage. Will he actually take revenge, though? Uh -huh. Ears is a deadly force. He's a great asset. <laughs> really intrigued to see how this goes. He has a, a small shot, a very small shot, but he has a shot. It just takes one well-thrown mini sword. I also don't think he's not. A, he's not totally above it. He's not above killing a child, but I don't think he would. Not in this situation, unless he really had to. There it is. He's giving him the, the Levi treatment. Oh, he turned his back. He turned his back. Okay. That's sort of what I expected. That's also what I thought. Wow. Well, now you have something to live for and fight for. He has no idea what it's going to be, what it's actually going to be. I mean, he might end up taking revenge ultimately, but that's definitely not the extent of it. Holy crap. The way this was done is so expert and so intriguing to me because it's not taking any easy pathways the show seems not content with just having like a big bad and that's it that's the end of the story and this is such a great example with a rare kind of complexity of the idea of following the call of destiny without really knowing what that is you don't know what the journey will be you don't know what the destination will be when you answer the calls of destiny you know i think just in most people's lives it's more mundane but it's the same thing you follow an urge you know you have a desire sometimes born from something very similar which is just suddenly you come up come across a problem you didn't know existed you know you've been insulated from a certain challenge for long enough until suddenly it arrives at your front door and you realize your own powerlessness you realize your own lack of preparation you realize you've sort of been asleep in key ways and that creates a problem that that's hard to ignore i mean one way of doing it is retreating becoming resentful just carrying that frustration with you forever but you know another way is you know making the vow never to find yourself in that situation again and using that as energy to actually meet a real part of the world that you you know maybe you didn't want to believe was real and inevitably that's both wrong and right at the same time it's wrong Wrong because in a sense you're being lured into a game you never wanted to play in in the first place and winning that game is not going to be satisfying at the level you need it to be it's just another aspect of life that you have control over but it's right in the sense that you now have more tools at your disposal 
that with the right rounding, with the right guidance, you now are capable of making good choices for the first time, whereas before you were just sort of living in ignorance and had you had no choice whatsoever. And you were kind of virtuous by momentum and by the restriction of not having any power. All pursuits towards certain tangible ends are probably gonna reveal some kind of truth because the truth is not purely subjective or it's more objective than just one's own outlook. And when you engage in a pursuit that involves variables that are beyond your direct control, and you can no longer imagine falsely that they are in your control, you're engaging with a higher level of objectivity than what has existed up to this point in your, in your mind. And a lot of the time to go to what is a cliche, but also I think a truth, you end up at a point that you, you already were introduced to, you already knew it, but you didn't really know it for yourself. And that's probably for Thorfinn gonna be something like what Thor's was telling him. Thorfinn got what his father said and understood it on some level, but he's going to fully arrive at it through that clashing with the world and through his own understanding and also self-discovery. But that's gonna be a really perilous journey and he's likely to make all the same mistakes that everyone he hates has made. Connecting that to some of the early ideas in the show about, you know, Vinland Saga, it's this progression towards this ideal that is really dangerous, likely to destroy you, and is probably not even the paradise you think it is, but yet is essential. Because striving for something like that is probably the only way to harmonize some kind of ideal state with actual reality, with actual truth and value. I really love the setup for the show. I'm now confident, having watched the first five episodes, that it's not satisfied with easy answers. So far, it's consistent with the message we've gotten from sort of the biggest hero we've seen so far, who is Thor's. It doesn't just give a hero a great line that sounds good and sounds transcendent. It actually lays the foundation for that very clearly, which doesn't mean there won't be terrible evil as well. But I feel confident that the show will engage with that at a level of challenge that is really broad-minded and, and deep.